Alrighty, hello, welcome to Ghost Trek. Um, I don't fully remember where we were. So, uh, I guess we were here. Uh, sure, yeah, let's talk to you. Here in this park, the gods surely control fate. Today, given 10 years from that day, we meet once again. That isn't the power of the gods, and what else is it? Could just be coincidence, but apparently you know our lady detective here. Did you tell us about it? About what happened ten years ago? Yes, yes, of course, I was actually just about to do that. <clears throat> oh, hang on, I remember that. It's this Rock of the Gods you keep mentioning. Okay, yeah, did it not? <laughs> did it not? Uh, hang on. Did it not start me over at the start of this level? Because if so, that's amazing. I love that for me, but... Yeah, because I remember it crashed in the middle of this, didn't it? And I haven't played it in a while. Don't you know? It's right there in front of us. <laughs> I'm going to go and check my content to see... That was the episode from which it died. Oof, yeah, sorry about it, Missile. Missile. Now what voice did I give her? Not that voice, that voice was wrong. Wait a minute, you say gods, but you mean dogs? <laughs> of course not, don't be silly. There's no time for ridiculous word games. You were standing just above the Rock of the Gods now. Take a good look at that monument. Hmm, let, me, let me just look at this one. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it did crash in the middle of this. So I guess it, it just, I guess it saved after I, I finished the level. Okay. Rock of the Gods, Temsic Park. The Rock of the Gods. The rock is buried there in the ground. Right there. It's been there these ten years. Ever since that day, it flew down from the heavens and showed us a miracle. Miracle. <laughs> so this rock you've been talking about is a meteorite. Precisely. Dropped from the sky on that day ten years ago. Yes, of course. Surely you know all about it. Yeah, tell me what happened ten years ago. That day, I just happened to be passing through this park. I had no idea that day would change my destiny. The sun was going down, and through the gloom, I heard the scream of a little girl. Come any closer, I'll shoot her. Yep, we... I think we've seen this. <laughs> I peeked out fearfully from the bushes and saw some shadowy figures. I didn't see the face of the criminal clearly. I knew I should do something to help, but I couldn't move. The tension was so thick, it was painful. Just when I couldn't stand it any longer. That's when it happened. The sky suddenly... Yep. I think we saw this. I don't remember how much was in that video. Apparently it was three weeks ago. Jesus Christ. I need to do videos more often. Or just more videos on the days that I do them. I don't know. When it crashed into the ground, the meteorite gave off a shell. Beautiful fragments. I saw it. One of those beautiful fragments. Pierced into the criminal's back. Judgment of the Gods was brought down in the park that day. Ten years ago, little girl that was you was saved by the Rock of the Gods. I can't believe it. The Rock of the Gods was given the name Temsic, and still today lies sleeping deep in the park's earth. I, I never knew about this Temsic. I was that detective jabbed and someone who saved me. You were very young then. You passed out from the shock of being taken hostage. Of course you wouldn't remember. That's funny. A huge incident like that should have caused quite a stir. Strange you never heard of it, Lynn. <laughs> it is, isn't it? But now that I think about it, I remember that I didn't want to think about what happened. I avoided the news and I never came back to this park again. That's why I didn't know anything about it. 
Let me drag this name ten stick after the name of the park that it fell in, then the rock of the gods was forgotten. Now an awful thing is happening. We're talking about turning the park into a housing site. I'll never forget the miracle I witnessed that day. So I've taken up residence in this park. I'm trying to appeal to the people. Protect the park, the rock of the gods. That is my mission. <laughs> I'm taking you with me, myself. So, ten years ago, the little girl that was Lynn wasn't even aware of the meteorite. I get that. Detective Jout, on the other hand, no way he didn't know about this Tamsic thing. If he knew... I forgot what voice I was using for Jout, it's been a bit. A man died. I took his life. What was that confession of his all about? The rocks of the gods that fell from the sky ten years ago changed the destinies of many people's lives. Like the ripples on a pond when a pebble is dropped in. With every answer I get, I learn about a new mystery. Would I be able to break the chain of mysteries before dawn? <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, now that we have the evidence we need, we decide to meet up again at the minister's office. Besides, there are a few things I want to ask Detective Jowd. <laughs> we found the music box hmm. so everything had been resolved I had wanted you to give this to him him? you mean Inspector Cabanella? I don't suppose he'll ever forgive me now then let's get this thing open a certain act to do it <laughs> he calls that a knack? Looks more like brute strength to me. <laughs> Don't point that at your own face. Don't point that at your own face. Don't do that. You should find scorch marks on the grip. When Camilla built her contraption, she used a special kind of string kind magicians use. It burns up in an instant and disappears. Why would little Camilla use something like that? I don't know. Maybe because she's a detective's daughter. Not leaving any evidence behind and all that. <laughs> <coughs> in the case report, there was mention of some scorch marks. When it happened, Camilla was watching from a hiding place. She saw the flame run into the, run to the gun, something she naturally didn't include in her design. <laughs> I took the gun- oh, fuck, it's Detective Jowd talking. I took the gun out of the frame and replaced it with a picture. If you remove the picture, you should find scorch marks behind it on the frame, too. Those marks should match up with the ones in the gun. In other words... It proves the contraption existed there in that room in that day. Not quite, but... <laughs> and it didn't work the way your little... I've forgotten what this guy's voice is too. The way your little girl intended, is that right? Whoops. Yeah, some cowardly culprit modified the design, is what he said. That angle was never brought up in court. And so as justice minister, I must call off the execution at this point. <laughs> I knew I was right. It wasn't Detective Jack. Now we can finally prove that. Thank goodness. <laughs> Thank you, Lynn. Those eyes of yours, I see the eyes of that little girl from ten years ago. Speaking of which, I have some questions about that, sir. <laughs> you have to carefully move so that you don't get stuck in somebody's head. Yeah, do you want to... Sissel... If you hadn't come to my cell tonight, I'd be gone by now without ever having known any of this. This is what I deserve. That's what I told myself these past five years. Things are different now. Thanks to you, my eyes have finally been opened. <coughs> tonight, I've come into contact with a lot of people's lives and got involved in their fates. 
The only reason I was doing it was to regain my own lost memory. But things are different now. We're connected to each other somehow. I just know it. That's why I need to ask you a few more questions in order to find the truth about us. <laughs> okay. So, manipulator. Cecil told me all about it. I th about the manipulator thing. Yes, and it looks like this manipulator really did a number on the minister, too. <laughs> Please don't pick on the minister. Please don't pick on the minister. If he dies again, I'm the one that has to save him. Sizzle, do you think that's what happened to me, too? Don't tell me. You were manipulated, too? <laughs> there was always a part of me that just couldn't believe it. Oh, uh, fuck, it's Sissel. Goddamn. <laughs> <laughs> that image of the one who shot me. Now I see the possibility of a new explanation. <laughs> but who is it and why did they do it? That contraption was a birthday surprise for Camilla's mother, wasn't it? That's right. Something's been bothering me about it. I feel like I know that device from somewhere. Yeah, we've actually seen it before uh, in the game. Played around with it a little. No surprise there. Lost your life once to that because of that machine. Oh, you're right. Yeah, it was her who got shot. <laughs> right? I knew it. I'm afraid I don't see. I told Detective Chad about it. Tell him about seeing that exact same contraption tonight in a completely different place. It's very strange indeed. Junkyard on the edge of town? I've never even heard of the place. What's more, I've never told a single soul about that contraption. You haven't? Hmm. That old pigeon guy. Who in the world is he? Hemze. Detective Jad, you must have heard this name before. Pemsic, the meteorite that fell in the park ten years ago. You were there. <laughs> so you found out about that, did you? I hear that meteorite saved little Lynn's life. Couldn't do anything to help Lynn that time. But in that case, I don't get it. If that's true, doesn't it mean you didn't steal somebody's life? Detective Judd, you told me that ten years ago, the person who killed that perpetrator in the park was you. I wasn't lying. I sold that man's life away. No question about it. It was entirely my fault. I was just about to shoot him. I would have shot him in the next instant if the meteorite hadn't come. At that point, I was already a murderer. It's not true. You were trying to save me. Then I'm sorry, but I don't think that's really it. On that day ten years ago, a different incident happened in another place. In the police headquarters interrogation room. The worst sort of incident. A suspect who was being questioned escaped. I happened to be there in the detective division, so I joined the chase. Fortunately, or I guess unfortunately, I was able to track him down alone in the park. I fired a warning shot. I wanted to catch him, but passed. That warning shot made him panic. At the time, I was a young and green detective brandishing my sense of justice like a sword. I made him panic, and I got you involved. It's my fault. All I could see was my target. I couldn't even see you. I'm so sorry. So the man that grabbed me died that day. The last ten years, I've never forgotten his face. And a few years after that, my wife Alma died in such a mysterious way, I thought it was fate. My punishment for what I'd done. I painted pictures of myself. Nothing but portraits of people's faces. Full of faces of the many people I'd met in my life and didn't want to forget. And tonight, finished my last portrait. 
final face I wanted to remember. Final face. Face of the man in that park for there. Wait just one minute. That can't be. I saw that painting. I saw the face you painted tonight. It was me. Are you telling me I was the man in the park? That's right. That face of yours is the one I saw ten years ago. The face of the man whose life I stole of the man who was pronounced dead at the scene. That can't be true. I just met Cecil for the first time tonight. And he died right in front of me. By the way, the name that I know the man in the park that day by isn't Cecil. Huh? From the first minute I laid eyes on you tonight, I've been wondering, who in the world is this guy? I... <laughs> Mr. Minister. Inspector Kamenawa, where are you? Just be quiet and listen. This is our demand. Uh, our demand hasn't changed. The execution must be tonight. Once we've confirmed it's been carried out, we'll release the hostage. What are you talking about, Inspector Kavanaugh? You know it wasn't my daughter who was abducted. Does it really matter who the hostage is? A life is a life. Even if it's the, even if it's the daughter of a death row prisoner. Once the criminal gets... Christ. Once the criminal gets the punishment he deserves, the hostage will go free. Carry out the execution immediately and wait for our call. What is it? You look paler than ever. Uh -huh. The rock of the gods that fell from the sky ten years ago twisted the fates of many people and started a chain of tragic events. Even now, the chain continues to grow ever longer. Inspector Cavanaugh has called proof that to us. <laughs> and the greatest mystery of all has risen to the surface. It is me that I've been chasing all night. Who am I? I'm even further from knowing than when I started. That's 128 to 255. Not exactly sure how many of these we've got left. I'm going to save this. I might have to quit halfway through this um, next session, depending how long it is. Chapter 15. Okay. <laughs> I know me, so I'm going to load up a walkthrough now and not look at it. Just in case I need it. Um. <laughs> You'll do. Okay. <laughs> Ten years ago, a man named Cecil took a little girl named Lynn hostage and was killed by a meteorite fragment. Tonight, a man named Cecil met a detective named Lynn at a junkyard in the edge of town and was killed by a bullet. The scene I find waiting for me on the other end of the phone line feels like the final nail in the coffin of my lost memory. <laughs> I see myself. I've been so ready to get to this point. There you are, Commander Sif. Finally. Sissel, where have you been, my good man? We've been looking everywhere for you. Had a little unfinished business to take care of. Didn't think it would take this long. What about your people? They sure went out of their way to mess me up. I say, I believe we've fulfilled every one of your conditions in our little deal. What right do you have to complain about anything outside our bargain? 
We can talk about that when we get together. This will be our last communication by phone. We'll arrive in one hour. I look forward to seeing you, Sizzle. Dawn is approaching. Darkness surrounding my own mystery is deep. I know it's always darkest before the dawn. <laughs> yes. We're nearing the final stages of our little deal, my good man. Sir, preparations are complete, sir. We just had a report, sir. Lights have been spotted. Have they now? By all means, let me have a look. Hmm. They will now disconnect from the communication cable and have no service until we arrive, sir. I recall this one being a bit of a bitch. I mean, most of the puzzles in this game are a bit of a bitch. <laughs> nice try, Inspector Cabanella. You could never stop me. <laughs> bye bye, Bee. So, that submarine guy and his people have a deal going with me, do they? That's the case. They probably aren't the ones who killed me, right? Anyway, there's definitely behi something behind the inspector's death. I think I better talk to him. <laughs> Hello, inspector. Hey, do you think you could wake up for me? Oh boy, still unconscious, eh? I guess he hasn't been dead for very long now. I'll just go ahead and go back to four minutes before his death. A little nervous about what I might see there, though. That's where I'm gonna find my answers. I can't run away from it. Alrighty, let's go back to four minutes before his death. I think actually this should be fine, but I think the one in the submarine is a real bitch. <laughs> That's not a spoiler. You know that there's one in the submarine because they zoomed out and showed you the entire thing, including lots of definitely possessable objects. You knew there was gonna be one in the submarine. Once a criminal gets the punishment he deserves, the hostage will go free. Carry out the execution immediately and wait for a call, yep. <laughs> That's a good boy. Gee, a hostage sure is a handy thing. Gives me complete control over the top police inspector in the country. <laughs> What's the matter? All those broken bones smart a bit? So it like to feel pain? Does it make you feel alive? Oh goodness. Now is that any kind of question for a tough investigator to ask? Isn't it obvious? Event, of course. Friends and all the people who stole my life away ten years ago. <laughs> the meteorite that stole your life. Have you forgotten that? I was murdered by all of you. Detective Jeff chased me down and forced me into a corner even though I was innocent. Lo and behold, right there where I was running. It was just an innocent little girl playing in the park. If that brat had been there, I never would have thought of taking a hostage. It's the most self-centered garbage I've ever heard. <laughs> Finally, you. I hadn't done what you did. I never would have pointed a gun at that kid. You were so proud of your spotless record. My case was the one blot on it, wasn't it? Only two people know the real truth. Me and Detective Jowd. But tonight's execution will be quite a relief to you, won't it? One of the people who know about that stain on your record will disappear for good why you didn't help him escape from prison. It's the kind of guy you are. I 
I've got nothing to say to you. You'd never listen anyways. Now then, the inspector. Time to make a big red stain on that spotless white coat. This was another condition of my deal. So I put everybody who knew about Tem sick. <laughs> now. <laughs> and that's what I'm up to? None of this makes any sense. Hey man, mind telling me what's going on? <laughs> You're late. My head is spinning, baby. Might understand that Cabanella character who just got shot is me. Ah, uh, that's right. And you're supposed to be the scoundrel boy who just shot me? I, uh, I guess so. But you couldn't be, could you? After all, the guy in the red suit just walked out the door, right? So... Who are you? I guess I just have to face it. I'm not that Cecil guy. I'm somebody who's searching for himself. That's why I'm here to save you. At the very least, you, get a, you have information about that guy in red. Information I need. So you came on a rescue mission now, did you? Nothing like the sound of that, baby. Because there's a very important life here somewhere. Life valuable to this nation. You think? Okay. Sorry, I think I just hit my, uh, umbrella. Oh, <laughs> right, it's this. <laughs> so, are you a manipulator too? I have ghost tricks, powers of the dead, yeah, but I can't control living creatures. Anywho, I think you better be very careful. That guy in red is a manipulator. Naturally, he knows about powers like yours. He realizes you're here. Things might get a little sticky. Better be careful. Oh god, no. Okay, this might actually be worse. Look at him. There's that something emanating from his body. Is it really the sign of having special powers from the dead? <laughs> sure is. I think it might actually be more beneficial. If I wait for him to knock the kettle down. Ooh, resume. I don't know how long that takes him. Yes, okay, so good. Great. Because now I can get down here. Oh. Look at this place. I see you can just, like, cupid ass over there. What in the world happened here? I think I'm starting to remember. Something bad happened here, and now there's another death lying hidden here. Another death? Didn't I tell you from the start? Didn't I say there was a very important life valuable to the nation here? I thought you were talking about you. <laughs> I'm just a crazy character in a white coat, baby. All right. Oh, it's Pigeon Man! Pigeon Man's dead here somewhere. Hey, come to think of it, where is that old pigeon guy? Pigeon Man. Let's see. Excellent. <laughs> this is some kind of device. Very astute observation. Uh, sorry, my memory isn't working. I do remember seeing somebody use this equipment, though. Yeah. <laughs> it's Pigeon Man. Uh, I guess I open this toolbox. Yeah. Oh! That works! <laughs> I could probably open that and fling him onto the ground below, but let's do something else instead. <laughs> uh, excuse me. You awake? A 
force. I never sleep during work hours. Professor! There's only one crazy character in a white coat that I know of. He hasn't lost his memory. I'm not the type that likes losing things, but never mind that. Gabadella, this is quite a surprising guest you've brought with you. Pretending like you didn't just blow up the place. Are you talking about me? <laughs> oh, this is a different guy. And I'm his guest, actually. Said he came to rescue us. Like you, my sharp friend, he still hasn't gotten his memory back. Pitiful. <laughs> anyway, now we'll be going back to four minutes before your death in order to change your fate, that is. Are we already in the past? <clears throat> well, we can go back even further. I've done it before. Still don't see a path to save Inspector Cavanaugh, but if we go back further, maybe I'll find a lead. <sighs> How many times do I have to tell you this, Professor? This place is dangerous. Don't be gap. I can't leave now. <laughs> He's completely dead, but just as I thought, I'm getting a reading. <laughs> this is the source of his powers. If I remove it... <laughs> He's not dead. He's just not there. Manipulator is something you can detect. It's a spirit. <laughs> Ridiculous. You figured it all out, huh? <laughs> yep. <laughs> You're a clever man, Inspector Cavanella. <laughs> I waste a lot of time tonight because of you, Inspector. <laughs> it's all just like you said. I died ten years ago. His body is just a vessel, a shell. I control everything. The shell, people. Just like I controlled the Justice Minister and Lynn. <laughs> you shoot your shell, where did you find her? To create conclusive evidence, you know, on that security tape. Now she's a murderer too. She'll suffer just like Jad did. I'm afraid it's time for you to die. <laughs> I don't have any grudge against you. I'm even grateful to you. Oh yeah? So why don't you let me live then? I'll be leaving this country forever tonight. But before I do, I need to erase all evidence that these powers of mine exist. Along with the contraption in this room. This time, the thing will work the way it was meant to, and it'll all be over. Cupid won't turn this time. Shoot his little arrow this way. Yeah. <laughs> Oof, that's an embarrassing pose for you, Cavanella. <laughs> Dynamite, eh? Why the devil did he put that there? Corpse disappeared. <laughs> the medical examiner. Remember him? He's a complete and utter imposter. Ah. Uh, yeah. Because he's blue, of course. He said he was going to take the corpse back to the lab. He'd already made a deal with the manipulator to meet him and give the body back. <laughs> I wasn't going to let that happen, baby. I noticed right away the medical examiner didn't know the first thing about examining the body. I knew it was a fake, so I tracked him down and bought him off. Had him smuggle the corpse to this room. Thought we could find the source of his powers. Of course, never in my wildest dreams did I think his, pa his abilities were powers of the dead. Anyway, there isn't much time. He's leaving the country before dawn. And I'm going to follow him, of course, after I save you two. Sometimes been nagging at the back of my mind. I remember what Ray said to me that night. He said that spirits cease to exist when the day breaks. But if that's true, 
How did a spirit from ten years ago still be here? No time for thinking now, baby. Action is the name of the game. Pure magic can take us back. Even further to the past. Yep. <laughs> Alright. There and start that explosion. Starp that explosion. I'm so stupid. It's enough for you to say. Foolish of you to say, too. If you stop the explosion, he'll just do me in some other way. Fair enough. Then jump in there and take care of that man in red, would you? I repeat, easy enough for you to say. And most likely impossible to boot. That huge explosion didn't even make him bat an eye. Your best bet is to save me during the explosion without him noticing. Easy enough for you to say. Sheesh, what is with all these people? Anywho, jump in there and do something. <laughs> so, I think what needs to happen is that he needs to be on top of this door when the time comes to uh, have the explosion happen. So I can open the door and he can fall through. He'll probably break a leg, but he will continue to be alive. <laughs> what in the world is this thing? And this device has that meteorite data entered into it. If it detects chemsic radiation, it responds. I guess sometimes it's important not to think about things too much. Huh. What a sorry pair. <laughs> oh, don't do that. Okay, it's just the measuring device. <laughs> I realized it wasn't yellow, so I was like, okay, that's fine. <laughs> Ridiculous. Etc. Etc. Okay. <laughs> this conversation is happening. I don't really know that I can do much. Oh, I can reach here. Well, what do you think you're doing? Just thought I'd try it out. If you do, you're gonna set the contraption in motion. Oh, yeah. I just thought. He just thought he'd blow me up is what he thought. There aren't a whole lot of things I can use my tricks on in this room. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so that is, that is by design. And I can't reach down there. <clears throat> I'm sorry I just made that terrible noise. I actually wonder. Hmm. You know what? It's no use I can't open it. Ah, shit. <laughs> Pretty heavy set. Sounds to throw that back too. Too bad it doesn't open downward. Shit. Yeah, that's why we're both dead. <laughs> okay. So I need to open this while he's someplace else and not on it. <laughs> During the explosion. I can't get back up there. So, okay. Perhaps I've already noticed time is running out. Yeah, no crafts about it, I know, but you know there aren't a whole lot of things I can use my tricks on. Did I find another path I'm sort of... What's this all? I know that voice. Help me. Find me. Before I'm carried away. The frail sounding call for help. Friend of yours? The little guy that looks a little fragile, but his strength doesn't surprise you. Well, he's asking you to find him. Most of the time, should I look for him? I... <clears throat> I... I don't know where to go from here or how to... Before he's carried away. Oh. 
Okay. I was carried away. Where was he? Should've tried to find him somehow. I was doing that, bro. Uh, okay. So, look at the exact circumstances. It seems like there was no situation in which he is, <laughs> like, going to be standing at a different angle. So... Not exactly sure. Hmm. Okay, well, while I'm here, let me look down. Rats. There were rats in here when he was dying. Hmm. Okay. Once nobody is standing on it, I'm gonna... Nope. Okay. Hang on. I just need you to not be standing on it, sweetheart. Move like ten... Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just need you not to be standing on it for like a millisecond. Hang on, because I think when this shoot happens, yes. Yes, 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 he's here somewhere. So I believe he's down here. There he is. Okay. Oh, hey, it's Missile. What are you doing there? Do you really have to ask? Seriously, are you really going there? Uh, no, that's okay. Never mind. Anyway, I need your powers. Can we ask? Of course. Here, let me come join you. Okay. Okay, here I am. Now maybe things will flow in a new direction. Great. <laughs> okay. So I've got like three milliseconds. Three milliseconds to figure out how the fuck this is supposed to work. I don't really need you to talk to me. Here, let me move up into the briefcase and let me move you up to the door. So, okay. Well, even still, I don't really know. Okay, let's stop that explosion. Uh, no, we can't do that. Here, let's take out the man and then. No, we can't do that either. We can't do this. We can't do that. What can we do? Let the explosion happen, then we'll rescue the old pigeon guy without the man in red noticing. Your powers are the key to all of it, Missile. Oh, I don't know about that, but I'll do my best. Talk about a matter of, s matter of seconds. You can't miss our chance. Yeah, no fucking kidding. I don't even know... Okay. Uh, there's, there's no connection between the tire down there and that bowling ball. The briefcase and the toolbox, maybe. Okay. So there's nothing I can do? Without the other me noticing in the moment of truth is just as the explosion occurred. Okay. Here is the dog's powers, but I'm not entirely sure how. I'll be real and honest with you. I'm not entirely sure how, so... I am gonna have to look through this walkthrough because I've been recording for way too long as it is. Final countdown begins. All right. Uh, so 
you've got to move up and then missile's got to move up here and then missile has to move I guess missile can move yeah missile can move farther okay fantastic so all right two stacks of magazines okay yes those squeaky guys are making a fuss about something yes well my animal instincts are starting to surface you mean you want to chase them i think you have to be alive to do that just some kind of rat feast in that trash can those things usually make a bigger commotion than that bigger commotion right yeah so oh no no uh swap these Okay. So. Great, yes. These little guys. Now that's what I'd call some proper commotion. I mean, that trash can dance. Truth be told, I feel a bit like dancing now myself. It's getting harder and harder to hold my wild instincts back. It's a dangerous bunch. Alright. Now what the fuck do I do? Interesting. Okay. So, woof. Okay. This is going to be a difficult one. Uh, you've got to be in that trash can lid. And Sissel up here, you're you're in the right place, boy. Just, just hold still. Okay. It's gonna... There we are. So. Alright, I've got to wait another few seconds. There we are. Okay, just making sure I've got this right. Okay, yes, I certainly do. Okay. So do I do it now? I'm gonna wait a millisecond more. It says when the timer hits zero. I'm gonna do that now. Got yes, okay. Perfect. Wonderful. Okay, yeah. I I definitely could have figured that out by myself. I would have I would have remembered that missile could move farther at some point. It would have taken me so long. Sorry, little pigeon. As for you, Inspector, I have a little job for you or five broken bones. I don't mind. Won't prevent me from manipulating you. Might make it hurt a little bit when I move you, though. Quite a bit, actually. <laughs> he probably also has four or five broken bones, to be frank. I can't believe it. You lot actually pulled it off. Sorry, Inspector Kavanaugh. Couldn't do anything to help you. There I am, a poor broken heap of arms and legs. But no matter, I enjoy the show. Magic disappearing act, that is. Nothing like it, baby. Yeah, except, like a normal magic trick, I'm the one that managed to vanish for those price here. This is a fun book. Okay. Rate of order. Okay, so we've at least saved Pigeon Man. What's the matter? You look like you'd rather be dead. Not that you aren't. I was just remembering the fact that right about now, real me is giving the poor justice minister a real fright. Oh, that phone call? Yeah, it was pretty... Uh, no. This is Sissel. Oh, that phone call? Yeah, it was pretty upset. Uh, excuse me, mister. You really shouldn't be mean like that. What's this lively little creature? Oh, this little doggy is the warrior who keeps Camila safe. Or he would be if he was actually still full of life. Camila. Gods in heaven, what a terrible thing. A poor little girl taken hostage. 
It's a cruel twist of fate, indeed. Wait just a minute. Is Camille is a hostage? Eh, we're sorry, little warrior. Camille, hostage? What's a hostage? <laughs> anyway, Inspector, it's time to save your life now. She couldn't get very far when you tried before, am I right? This time it's different, right? That's right. Less working together. It's a whole different situation. Save the inspector and we'll go rescue Camille, okay? Okay, let's hurry up and get through this. Gee, kids, you're making me feel like an afterthought. <laughs> an afterthought. <laughs> cool. Alright. Camille's upstairs. First step is to get there. Go first and wait for you. Okay. Oh, Jesus. Bye, missile. Okay, Flavita, we need your help. Carry this measuring device upstairs. There's Mr. Ghost in it, so don't drop it. I love his little pigeon. <laughs> Thank you. You are the perfect creature. I won't make you carry me for too long. Hey, our sizzle. Sorry for the wait. Four minutes from now, the inspector will be killed by a gun. You'd just jump in there and stop him from firing, would you? There you go again with that stuff. Besides, it doesn't make any sense. If you stop him from firing, he'll just kill you some other way. Mm, that sounds familiar. Same situation as mine. Your best bet this time around is to allow him to shoot and then save Kevinella without him noticing. <sighs> it's even worse than last time. Anywho, jump in there and do something. Okay, I'm ready to jump in, Sissel. Don't forget, whenever you want to do... Yep, press B. <laughs> the thing I just did, you mean? You mean the thing I just did, right, sweetie? Where are you? Okay. <laughs> Go hang out in that helmet. Uh, what can I do from here? Oh, literally nothing, huh? No, that's totally cool. <laughs> um... Huh. <laughs> okay, so this will get in that kettle. I think, right? No, I'll just stay here. I think I'm gonna need this step ladder because it moves. And I don't have a lot of mobility here. Okay, but I am looking at this. And it's actually telling me to do this now. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing the walking. Oh, did you see that? That sizzle turned around. You have to call him that. Yeah, maybe this is our chance to drive some ghost turks. It's the only time he takes his eyes off of me, too. You have something to do. Do it now. First steps towards saving the inspector. Yeah, okay. So... <laughs> can I use it to... Whoops. Use it to... How? Oh, heck. Heck and fuck. Uh... Yeah, you go hang out on that step ladder and then down here, okay, sweetie? Okay. I've got to do this now when he's not looking. Nothing. Did you notice anything? No, okay. Perfect. It's the same shape as the helmet. So I assume I have to do something about that. Uh, okay, I can get on the stepladder now, right? Right? Yes, and I can move it. Ah, his back is turned to the stepladder, so you can't see it. 
Quick, I'm a little scared right now. Wait till he died. This is already dead. He died ten years ago. I knew full well he wouldn't die if I shot him. Why'd you go to the trouble of shooting him at all? Time's almost up. There's enough chit chat. Just last split seconds are a chance. As of the last time. Okay, Loxer says I'm supposed to do this. I'm not fully sure what this is called. That's a book shape. Yeah, that's the same shape of that book up, shape as that book up there. Um, let me read the rock the walkthrough to make sure. <laughs> okay, not sure what I'm trying to accomplish here, but no, don't talk to him. I'm a little busy for chit chat. Uh, missile swap, please. Swap, please. All right. Okay. Oh, would you look at that? Right on the hook. Okay. Hey, now that I'm looking at it, the head is the same shape as the helmet you just knocked down. I thought so. Yeah, it is. Uh. Okay. Uh, no, so, uh, actually, Sissel can just hang. Sissel, <laughs> you were not needed here. <laughs> Alright. But everybody knew about 10 sick. Get him, Gunder gets shot again? Wait, our chance is coming up. Last but second, right? Leave it to me. <laughs> Would you look at that? The blood is hanging in midair between the gun and the inspector's forehead. That's our chance. You're in the bullet right now. Swap this little thing with something else. Um, it's the hat, right? Whoops. Oh, shut it. It's a yeah. How is he not gonna notice this? Does he turn around immediately? <laughs> <laughs> I bet it would kill him instantly if he did it with the fucking helmet. <laughs> I don't think he noticed. Looked like you pulled off another magic disappearing act. And now let's say again. I love new hats. <laughs> did, did I do alright? You did a fine job, little one. You saved another life. And I'll keep doing it too, over and over. What I saw in just these four minutes gave me all the answers I've been looking for. All your research of these past ten years pales in comparison, Reich right, Professor. So you two were working together? It's about the size of it, yeah. Who we'll believe a story about a manipulator? So we pursued it ourselves, just the two of us. I'm quite a crazy character myself, after all. Hey, let's hurry back, back to our time. We have to rescue Miss Camilla. Certain guy I have to follow, too. Completing his revenge on Inspector Kebanella, the man in red left. And now, a new story is about to unfold in the new present. How are you feeling, crazy old character? Hey there, Professor. With a live I see. Yeah, nothing like it, baby. I don't know if I'm getting old or what. Got a few aches and pains here and there. Just to be a little thing like an explosion wouldn't bother me. 
Yeah, right. Like, I'm going to believe that. So, what? I and Red is gone? Just in case, I posted special investigation units all around the building. Just pray the boys came through for us. Pick a bad time not to listen to me, buddy of mine. Oh, well, looks like both of their deaths were erased. Unfortunately, the case of the inspector and went. Can't call it a complete success. But in any case, at least you have the information they need to start tracking the manipulator. Better talk to them. Yep. Cabanella. If I knew things were going to end up like this. I would have tried to die in that explosion, baby. That way I could have been dancing after Big Red by now. Hmm. Might be able to race Des, but it's sure I can't do much about injuries. But really, you shouldn't talk that way. Yeah, sorry. I suppose you're right. I just hate feeling so helpless. Right there in my grasp. While our plans were resting on tonight, and then this had to happen. Guess he's thinking about his spotless record. Not too late. Still have a chance. Maybe I can catch him. <coughs> Mr. Good. Revenge. That guy mentioned revenge against the people who stole his life. He's a fool. He's the one that made the decision to take that little girl hostage and he wound up dead. He only has himself to blame. What about when he said this? Hmm? Murdered by all of you. Hadn't done what you did. Yes, ten years ago on that day, the Special Investigation Unit was there working on a certain big case. We hauled in a young man, an important witness to our investigation. And then I did it. I made two very stupid mistakes. Detective, I'm telling you, I don't know anything about it. Fine, fine. You're under no obligation to talk, of course. Fuck off, Gary. <laughs> I got a new phone, and for some reason, even though I've turned the goddamn notification sounds off, it's still notifying me with sounds. Hate. Stupid game. Why? Why do you think you're allowed to give me notifications? I specifically told you not to. Oh my god. Why, f why do I have to go through everything and fucking tell it all to stop giving me notifications again? I, uh, I had all of these unticked on my, on my iPod, uh, and yet, not everything, it seems, was, uh, imported over to my iPhone. I have an iPhone now, also. <laughs> but if you don't, the Special Investigation Unit can make the rest of your life a living hell. I'd just been assigned to the Special Investigation Unit, you see. They didn't share much info on big cases with a newbie like me yet, and I wanted to impress them. So it was supposed to be a simple matter of taking a statement. But I was too green, I pushed him too hard. I drove him into a corner and made him lose all hope. That was my first mistake. And then I made another mistake on top of that. Yeah. 
Okay, plus two petrol report. You stay right here and be a good boy now. Yeah. <laughs> That's when I did it. I left my gun behind in the interrogation room. Yeah. How could you? He used my gun to escape. What he said is true. If I hadn't made that mistake, he never would have had a gun to point at Lynn in the first place. We first found out about Amnipolita's existence during a certain overseas communication. For national security purposes, this country keeps tabs on communication. This particular communication was about making a deal with a, a, deal with a certain foreign country. He said he wanted them to buy him, him and his powers. So we first heard about it. Of course, we didn't know what he looked like at the time, and in order to prove these powers were his, he gave them two predictions. He foresaw two completely preposterous, impossible cases. The case of a man who would sing national secrets during a live rock concert broadcast. The case of a man who would take the chief commissioner hostage in his own office. Uh, those two inmates of the special prisoner. <laughs> Kept tabs on their communications and lost an investigation. Then finally, we pinpointed where they were going to meet tonight and staked it out. And if that had plans on leaving this country tonight, a submarine that belongs to the other country in this deal. But we haven't been able to find where it's going to surface. It's terrifying to think of what happened if his powers were to fall into their hands. Right. Highly unlikely they'd use him for peaceful purposes. Now they have that little girl as a hostage. <laughs> spotless record. This spotless record of yours. Is it really that important to you? Of course, baby. In some ways it's more important to me than my life. Well, it's because of my record that I'm able to get my hands on all intel as head of the Special Investigation Unit. Because of my position, I get to direct all aspects of the investigation into the manipulation case. That's why you cared about your record so much? Of course. Why else, baby? I just never could believe it, man. Job shooting Alma. I didn't care that he confessed. There was definitely something more to the story. Some secret. I did everything I could to climb the ladder. Everything in my power. Then I finally found the answer. It took five long years, though. That manipulator, he's gonna prove that Jad is innocent. It's one thing I just don't understand. If you were so determined to help Detective Jad, why didn't you help him escape from prison? That's an easy one, baby. Escaping from prison is crime. I wasn't about to have him commit a crime after spending five years trying to prove him innocent. And he himself has to be executed, you know. As a man of the law, I have to make sure the execution was stopped legally. <laughs> That's why I brought him before the justice minister, too. I needed to buy as much time as I possibly could, baby. There's one little unfortunate result of all this. Lynn completely misunderstood your intentions. That's a little misunderstanding. My baby will come around. Give it time. There's more important things to do with our time tonight. Yeah. Speaking of, tell me what you know, Pigeon Man. Do you mind if I talk to you for a minute? I haven't always been a junkyard superintendent, you know. I used to be part of the police. Not as a detective, but as a medical examiner. I investigated victims' cause of death. Ten years ago, I was asked to autopsy a strange corpse. Hit by a meteorite fragment and died instantly. That's what the police report said. There were no signs of life. He was definitely dead. But I never filed an autopsy report. That's because the corpse suddenly vanished, leaving behind only one clue. Unusual corpse. I bet that's what I've been chasing all night. Just tell, me, just tell me more. Yeah, sure. I have an interest in you recovering your memory and finding your true identity, too. It's the only way I can describe it, too. It was an unusual corpse. He was dead, all right. No question about that. But there wasn't a scratch on him. Not a scratch, but I thought he was hit by a meteorite fragment. I don't understand it any more than you do.
I was completely bewildered. But when I tried to autopsy him, I was even more puzzled. I couldn't perform the autopsy. The scalpel went in, but I couldn't cut. As soon as I tried to make an incision, it would heal up the very next instant. And that's how it went. No scarring or blood either. I never had the chance to solve the mystery. That's because the corpse up and vanished on us. The morgue is well guarded. Nobody could have stolen that body. There is one way the corpse could have disappeared. Yep. <laughs> Got up, opened the door, and walked out on its own. He was dead, but he wasn't dead. He saw it with our own eyes tonight. Not even that explosion could kill him. He didn't even feel it when he slammed his fist on that stove. <laughs> the clue left behind. The corpse left behind some data from some testing I did. I got readings. I got some readings for some kind of radiation coming off that body. Radiation. I used all kinds of instruments, but I couldn't determine exactly what kind of radiation it was. Some undiscovered type from a world unknown. Right, it was coming from the meteorite fragment. <laughs> I went to that park and tested the spot where the meteorite fell. Just as I expected, I detected radiation coming from the center. The exact same pattern of radiation as that on the corpse. At the time, I thought he was some kind of immortal being. He would die only to come back to life. I wanted to research it all in depth, so I quit my job as a police medical examiner. Several years later, I came to learn the connection between my research and the manipulator case. Thanks to the arrival of this crazy character here. Oh, well, stop now, Professor. Do you want to see me blush? <laughs> Apparently that man is straight, by the way. Absolutely untrue. <clears throat> it was about a year ago, I'd say. This man in a white coat came dancing in my research lab here. Literally, of course. I heard there was an oddball here who's researching Tempsey. Is that you, baby? Who are you to be calling anybody an oddball? <laughs> I was investigating the manipulator case then, and then I heard there was a man who had, yep, done it. It's like a meteorite had struck me in the head. Time we were just starting to get leads on this manipulator. We didn't know who he was yet. But we knew he was communicating with a foreign country. It's just my power is not of this world. So when I put two and two together, baby, the manipulated case and Tempsick were somehow connected. Which also explained how five years ago he used his powers. Yep, so it's murder. He added the gun into the contraption, most likely by controlling Camila. <coughs> Alright. <coughs> the contraption in the basement there. He built that to try and help Detective Jazz. That's right. 
Jed and I worked together back when I was with the Force. I used the reports of his case to try and recreate the evidence. There was just one part of it that I couldn't reproduce no matter how hard I tried. Camilla told Jed it did something it shouldn't have made an impossible move. I added that part to the device I recreated. I put in a part that would allow Cupid to rotate, otherwise the gun wouldn't fire. That must mean somebody manipulated Camilla's contraption. As a result, we proved to ourselves the manipulator actually existed. Hi, Lynn. <laughs> the fucking look on his face. <laughs> it definitely looks like he has several broken bones and he's just trying to smile through the fucking pain. <laughs> That's exactly what that smile was telling me. What's up with the phone call? I must have sounded like a real villain. I hated to spoil the image of me. It's not really the image she had of him. <laughs> Dr. Cavanell, I'm sorry. I just heard you were chasing after that male this time to help Detective Jowd. Camille Blader is such a dangerous character. I was hoping you didn't have to be involved. So that's why you had me arrested tonight. Like I always say, if someone's in the way, throw them away. Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's the correct response to have, Sissel. Not Sissel, but you know what I mean. Tonight. I really thought we finally had him. My body gave out on me right at a critical moment. It's a cruel joke. <laughs> yeah. Jad thinks so too. But a joke is a joke. You might as well laugh. The minister called off the execution order. While I was at it, he let Detective Jad go free until tomorrow morning, too. It's a pretty extreme while he was at it. Sorry it took so long to get here. You can leave the rest to me. There you go again. You've always been like that. Everybody else run around and then you swoop in at the last second. Five years ago, you left this coat with me. Just free turn yourself in. I promise to give it back to you one day. <laughs> this fucking ugly ass green coat. <laughs> Hideous. Waiting so long. Uh, thanks for not giving up on me. Well, then. <laughs> Bye. This present you gave me. It's just what I needed. Thank you. <laughs> Are you there? You and I have to go find that man. Yep. Don't know where the submarine is and the phone line doesn't work. They use communication cables to you to make their calls. We'll get you hooked up somehow. Just wait here until we do. Okay, yep. Thanks, Lynn. <laughs> it's just fucking... It's almost dawn. I'm not who I thought I was. I'm actually further from knowing who I am than ever. But now I don't feel so alone. Each one of us, for, for their own reasons, is looking for the truth. Together, I think we can shed light on these mysteries and drive away the darkness. It's almost dawn. Alrighty. <coughs> So I hope you enjoyed this uh, <laughs> probably very long, oof, yeah, very long episode of Ghost Trek. Um, I'm so glad it didn't fucking crash in the middle of this again. Um, but yeah. Whew. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more of this and everything else that I'm doing currently, uh, I put out episodes Mondays and Thursdays. Uh, and I will see you next time.